Hello everyone, my name is Paul Third, and this week I'm going to be talking about my experiences with IK Multimedia Arc 4 and how I found it compares to Sonarworks. Now this isn't going to be a typical Paul Third video where I totally geek out and I just <laughs> throw all of my research into the video because I think it's going to be too long and I found that not everybody gives a shit and some things just go over people's head. So if you want all of my research and you want more of an in-depth analysis of how I reached this conclusion of what I'm going to speak about today, uh, then consider joining my Patreon. Right, so very quickly, this is the room that I did all the testing in. This is my control room. It was going to be what I was going to be doing a lot of stereo mixing in, but I've now changed that. I'm just moving everything into the Atmos room, which is, you know, treated to the absolute hilt. Like, honestly, you, you stick Sonar Works in Arc 4 in there, they hardly do anything which is, you know, the ideal scenario. This room is well treated, but, you know, it always could be better. I've got some GIK paneling behind me, the bass traps, which do a phenomenal job. I've got some DIY bass trapping here. There is a bit of foam. However, there is some toming. It's like two and maybe two and a half square metres worth of um, diffusion absorption panels there. And there's also... Uh, 1.2 by 1.2 meter um, ceiling panel above my head as well. I've done all the room EQ wizard measurements and I found that this is the best place for the desk. Honestly, fucking hours, hours of my life. I'm never going to get back and measure, measure, move, 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 inch by inch just to know that this is the best fucking position for this desk. So it's quite a decent room, you know, to do a comparison on the decay times under 200 milliseconds consistent across the board. So it's decently, you know, I would say quite well treated compared to like a lot of people's uh, control rooms and the rooms that they mix in, but it still needs work, which obviously I was using Sonarworks for. Now, my experience with Sonarworks was that whilst it would correct the tonal issues in the room, I always felt I was losing something. So whilst I was gaining tonal accuracy, I was losing kind of front detail. When I listen to speakers, I always find that how they kind of how forward they are to me tells me kind of how good the phase coherence is. Now, phase coherence is something that's very, very important in speakers. Honestly, I went deep into that Patreon post. If you're into it, fucking just join Patreon and get the fucking post. But phase coherence is very important because phase coherence is essentially, you know, your timing, you know, per frequency, you know, and how everything reaches your ears. So perfect phase coherence would be that all the frequencies, so left speaker, right speaker, all the frequencies get to your ear at the same time. And the better that timing is, you know, the more consistent the image is going to be and the more forward that the speakers are going to be. Now, in regards to the way Sonarworks measures, um, Sonarworks basically prioritizes amplitude. So it'll measure all the points, get an average reading, and then it'll have a flat target. And then I'll basically just say, right, anything that is an, an anomaly, so anything that's less or higher in amplitude above this flat target, so above, say, 0 dB, it will correct it. And I call it mirror correcting. So it will genuinely correct absolutely everything. Now, if you use minimum phase, that's going to be an absolute disaster, especially the more it has to do. The reason that that is is due to phase distortion. Phase distortion essentially happens when you do a lot of kind of aggressive, you know, phase shifting. So if you've got like a like really narrow boosts and dips and they're close to, um, to other frequencies, then you're essentially going to get phase distortion, which is going to kind of clutter your image um, and everything's just not going to sound as clear, right? Which if you listen to Sonarworks in minimum phase, you will hear a coloration to the sound. And that coloration, I think, is like night and day. Like you bypass on, bypass off. You're like, whoa, the speakers sound different, especially in the low end. I always find that the low end just always sounds different and it's, it, my speakers don't sound like the speakers anymore. Now, you do have linear phase and you've got mixed phase. When it comes to Sonarworks, I always do linear phase. Now, linear phase is fine because you've not got really any phase distortions. However, what linear phase means is that it's not really impacting the timing across the frequency spectrum. Because essentially, you know, that's what we do when, you know, when we EQ. Phase shifting is essentially time shifting. So Sonarworks can't correct for that at all. Right? If you use minimum phase, it just loads of fucking phase distortions and the, the phase um, shifts that occur in minimum phase have no relation to what's going on in the room. It's just, you know, 
the cause and effect of the mirror correction and using minimum phase. So you can kind of try and correct that with linear phase, but then it won't really help you kind of, when I say fix, or I just kind of mean kind of mitigate for you know, any timing or phase or irregularities that may happen in the room. When it comes to arc four, arc four, in my opinion, does a much better job at catering for the phase coherence. It adjusts the timing of the speakers and it does a lot more off-axis measurements, right? So you do three different measurements, right? So you do like your listening height, so 1.2, 1.35, 1.0, 5. So what that allows ARC4 to do is it basically builds more of a picture of how the off-axis sounds kind of build up and how that affects the frequency response. So it could then differentiate between direct sound and reflected sound. Now, what I like about ARC is the way that it works is that it doesn't do the mirror correct thing that Sonoworks does. So what it uses, it uses very, very, very broad and wide EQ moves. Now, this is when in, your, in the default mode in the natural phase. Now, this comes in really handy when you understand that ARC's main focus is to try and mitigate for the effect that the room has in combination with the direct sound. So, uh, for example, in this room, again, you'll have, obviously, the, the low mid build-up, and there might be a few odd kind of anomalies. Where, where sonar works will correct every single notch and peak, right? What uh, ARC will do is it'll just do very, very, very broad moves. So you'll notice that um, certain kind of very sharp peaks won't be touched at all, and you'll be like, what's all that about? Well, what I found in my measurements is that I feel, and I might be wrong, but I feel from my measurements that ARC understands what is tonality from the speaker and what is impact of the room. Because I find that, you know, with the Kali IN5s, it's got that inherent dip, then boost um, in the high end. Sonar works will correct that and it makes it sound papery and just horrible and overly toppy where ARC leaves it alone. And the same with nulls. Now, again, if you go into the Patreon post, I go very, very deep into this. But long story short, you can't fix a null. You can't do it. Right? You just cannot fix a null. It's phase cancellation. Now, this is very important to understand with Sonoworks because if you've got, say, like a 10 dB null at 100 hertz, Sonoworks will try and correct plus 10 dB at 100 hertz. That does not fix the null. It, it cannot fix it. All it's doing is adding 10 dB more strain at 100 hertz. You're going to create more distortion because you've got less headroom in the speaker. And especially the smaller the speaker, the more that you try and add, at those, especially in those low frequencies, which requires a lot of power to be able to fucking, you know, produce that frequency, you're just going to have more distortion. It's going to be a colored sound and you're making your speaker work harder. And not only have you got distortion from, at, say, 100 hertz, Obviously, you've got orders of harmonics, which means that you're going to have more harmonics above 100 hertz as it works up in octaves, right? Now, I know this is geeky, but it's important to understand, right, even just from a brief aspect, because in ARC, ARC will not correct nulls. It won't do it. It just won't do it. And you might look at ARC and go, oh my God, it's not doing what Sonorworks does, and that's what makes Sonorworks better. Like, it's not correcting it. Right, understand nulls, you can't correct them. The only, with, well, with EQ, you can't correct them. The only way that you can fix a null is by physically moving speakers. A null can only be fixed by physics. That's it. You need to move speakers. You need to move your listening position. If it's your sub, you need to move your sub. It's a physical phenomenon, right? It's phase cancellation. Well, all I can tell you is that you essentially can fix constructive interference, which is when you get your peaks your build-ups in your room. You can theoretically correct for that to a certain extent with EQ. Again, if you want to know more, check out the Patreon post. So what I find ARC does is ARC corrects what it can correct and it does so in a very gentle, subtle way that doesn't really impact the phase coherence as much. Now, when you're using very subtle, broad EQ moves, you have less of a phase shift. The phase shift is very gradual, right? And it's more subtle. Where if you've got a very, very, you know, very tight cue, a notch, and you go like 5, 6 dB in whatever direction, it's going to cause quite a severe 
aggressive phase shift, which can create phase distortions. Long story short, right? When I listen to ARC, I hear the speakers as sounding more forward. The speakers sound like they do, just that the room has less of an impact. I like the fact that transients are more forward. I like the fact that everything sounds more cohesive. Everything just sounds better. Whatever it's doing, it improves the sound. Transient response, forwardness, phantom centers better, and it just sounds natural. Sonar works, in my opinion, sounds phasey. Even <laughs> in linear phase, it still doesn't sound right. I think a big part of that is trying to correct everything tonally without really trying to correct the phase coherence. But I can't sit there to you and say that ARC4 is correcting the phase response of the room because I think that's probably theoretically impossible. Um, Trenov, I think, gives it, it tries to give it a good go, whatever it's doing with its 3D mic or whatever. But you know, my good friend Ed Thorne, you know, he's having a lot of issues with Trenov to the point where he's like unsure if he's going to keep it. But, you know, when we get into all this stuff, we are talking stuff that I can't say I fully understand. I'm, I'm taking a guess that ARC's very selective in its broad, you know, EQ moves and its correction that it does do. So it EQs in a way that doesn't really imbalance the phase coherence, but I can't say for sure. I would need to, you know, get the, the designer or someone on the channel or, but at the end of the day, right, that's a rabbit hole. I'm just going to get, I'm going to go into a massive rabbit hole with it and I'll be like, want to know everything about it. When really, you know, the whole crux of it is I don't need to know all of this. All I need to know is how does it sound? What I can tell you is ARC4 is more natural. It will not correct the sound of your speakers. That's not what it's for. It will just kind of mitigate or try to mitigate for the impact that the room has on your speakers. And I think it does that in a very good way. It impacts the phase coherence. Things are more forward, transient sound better. Everything just sounds more solid. Where Sonar works for me sounds just lacking. The mid-range always sounds recessed on Sonar works in stereo. I don't know why the transients sound a little bit recessed, but it's just the front to back is missing. If I bypass Sonarworks, the speakers always sound forward to me. And then when I go on Sonarworks, I'm like, the speakers have just moved back and I don't like that. But, you know, I would, I always said, no, I would much rather have, you know, the tonal correction with the linear phase, you know, rather than um, not having it and kind of having a muddy sounding room because that was going to impact every decision that I made. The mirror correction thing doesn't work for me. I don't think you can correct speaker and room correction. A lot of speakers, you know, have their own phase coherence, which I think Sonar works kind of fucking messes with, especially in the mid-range. Where ARC 4 just sounds very natural. It still sounds like the speakers, but it enhances the sound. It tonally corrects the room whilst, you know, actually enhancing the transients and maintaining the forwardness. And in most cases, you know, bringing the speakers a little bit forward. With the Kali um, INs, like, which I always find to be a little bit, you know, lacking in the forwardness range, it genuinely does a lot. And it, all of a sudden you're like, wow, the Kali's have got that forwardness I was missing. Where, you know, with the Focal Shape 65s that have amazing phase coherence anyway, it's just a little bit of a difference. Just a little bit of better transient response, a little bit more forward. But I do notice a big difference with the Kali's. Now, you can do the whole Sonarworks thing with IK Multimedia. There is different settings that you could use where you can mirror correct it and you can set it to linear phase. Um, the last thing I will mention is that there are room contours. Now, there are kind of different room contours in Sonarworks as well. Listen to um, the speakers in your room and use the room contours in a way to tell you, you know, what sounds best to your ears. If your speakers are overly bright, um, then I think the... Is it, the, is it the control room contour or the studio control contour or whatever it is, there's a room contour in there. I think it's maybe control room contour. That's great because it gives you a low bump and then it gives you kind of a high end dip, which is more what um, speakers actually sound like in a room. Everybody thinks the speakers are flat. It doesn't. If you use um, Arc 4 flat, it's going to sound overly bright and it's not going to sound correct. Where if you use the default that's going to give you know a little bit of a bass boost and a little bit of a roll off. Go through them and just pick the one that sounds correct to your ears and sounds most tonally balanced and isn't kind of distracting. Yeah, you know, I do find that some speakers are really bright and by taking that kind of high end down, it kind of calms the tweeters down and everything just sounds more tonally balanced, right? You've got to use your own ears for that. But um, I just think Arc 4 does everything the way I want to do it. You know what I mean? I think the box works great, even though you're adding in another form of conversion 
So, you know, in this room, I had it going from topping DX7 Pro Plus into ARC, then into whatever speakers I was testing, which was a lot because because I was doing lots of speaker comparisons, a shit ton, and they were all calibrated through ARC. And I also did them like through Sonarworks as well. And I was comparing and I was always getting better results mixing wise with ARC. I just feel that you're, there's a compromise with Sonarworks. You're always losing something with Sonarworks. You're gaining to lose where with ARC 4, I don't really think you're losing anything. I just think that ARC 4 takes what you've already got, mitigates for the room in a very natural way. And I just think it sounds better. You switch on your speakers if you've got the box. And that's it. It just fucking works and sounds the way it should. And yeah, there you go. There's my opinion on uh, ARC 4 from IK Multimedia and how it compares to Sonarworks. And yeah, I thought it was going to be a short video. But then, as I said earlier, right, imagine how long this video would have been if I did go <laughs> into all the geeky stuff, it'd be fucking, fucking half an hour long, right? So there you have it. There's my opinion. Leave your comments down below what you think. Blah, 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 blah. My name is Paul Third, and I'll see you whenever I see you.